Well guys, here we are again. That age old argument of whether or not we should be sowing potatoes in buckets or containers or in the ground. Well, in this episode, we're gonna run our own little experiment. As you guys are aware, I've always grown potatoes either in beds or in buckets. I have grown in the ground before, but my preference is to grow in buckets. There are a couple of reasons for that. It's easy to be able to do so early and to bring them out when you're ready. It's, a, it's easy to be able to um, pull them in in the winter and they're very easy to harvest. If you're growing for competitions, they're much easier to get the potatoes out without ruining the, uh, without ruining the skin. Now, this experiment, okay, is we're going to grow a line of 24 potatoes okay and we've also got a line of 12 buckets which will have two potatoes in we'll show you that now when we come to it but we're going to grow a variety called sapo mira and these potatoes have all been chitting at exactly the same time we have left planting these until now for the simple reason being is i want to be able to do this experiment where they've been chitting for the same length of time and they've been planted the same length of time so what we're going to do now, we're going to get over to where I've dug the trench already and I'll explain what's going on there. So as you can see here, we have a trench dug out and it is 22 feet wide. We also have 12 buckets along here. So we will put two potatoes in each bucket and we'll put 24 along the trench. Now, these potato buckets need a good wash. They're not gonna be planted like that, but they will be trenched themselves to about a third of the way in so that the holes are buried in the ground. This will help to retain water. They, they can both be put down this end of the bed because this is on a very slight slope and this is where most of the moisture will congregate. So they're getting the very best. Also, as you can see to the right, we have a fence in there which will help shield all the homes from uh, the wind and everything else. So we are really giving this as much attention as we can. Now, for the trench guys, we're using just the normal soil. We will feed, obviously. Um, and for the buckets, I'm gonna use, in, in the interest of fairness, I'm gonna use last year's compost. So I'm not gonna put brand new compost in. So in effect, it's just acting like a growing media, just like this soil is. If anything, this soil's probably got a bit more nutrients in it than the compost will have. But we are going to feed with blood, fish and bone. And, um, and then that is all we're gonna use to try and make this as fair as possible. But it's my, theory here that out of this line and that line the buckets are going to win this hands down i'll be very shocked if they don't so what we're going to do uh we're going to get on we're going to plant these potatoes in here first and then we'll go into the buckets later okay guys all i'm going to do now is just fork over the bottom of the trench just to loosen it up this has already been well dug All I really want to do is just not have a hard packed bit of soil underneath them. I'm using a nice little border fork here, which is ideal for this. I'll make it nice and light. Gonna spread in some blood fish and bone not huge amounts probably four or five handfuls in here bearing in mind this is 20 foot long uh, 22 foot long there we go now to keep this 
quite good. What we're going to do is plant a variety of sizes as well. So I've got two large, a couple of medium, and we'll work from there. If the potatoes won't stand up, just put a bit of earth around them, just to hold them in place. And uh, we're going to get in our 20 odd potatoes here. We put in a couple of smaller ones as well like we will with the pots. So we got, I'm gonna move this one across. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven. I can't get I want to keep the spacing right if I can't get all 20 odd in there we'll count them and we'll reduce the number of buckets So what we got? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 10, 11, 12, 13. Well, let's see if we can get one more in your summer. Let's close these gaps up just a little bit and try and get one more in. And then I'll make 20, guys. Move that one along a little bit there. There we are. Okay. There we go. So we've got 20 Sarpo Mira in the trench, okay? So that's 10 buckets that we need to fill, guys, not 12. Now, like I said, all this has already been dug, so all it's a case of now is just filling the trench over. And then we'll fill it up as we go. Right guys, there you have it. So we have a nice piled up load of uh, potatoes now, so there's 20 in this row. Now, the next step we need is to get the 10 buckets of two potatoes in each bucket planted. I'll show you how we do one, and then I'll come back to you and at the end show you what them in the ground. But these are now topped higher as high as they need to be and uh, we will dig another trench now for the buckets to sit in and then we'll be good to go 
So I want to talk about these pots. As you can see, I've given this one a bit of a clean. Now, these are really good solid pots. I've used them for a couple of years now. And I got these from Oakland Gardens, guys. Superb pots, really, really durable. They've been thrown around. They've gone through a couple of winters, you know, and they're still as good as new. What I like about the Oakland pots is rather than just having the slot holes around the side, they've also got four big holes in the bottom as well so it really helps them roots to get through the pot and out into the ground if they're looking for moisture but um, they're great not just for planting potatoes but for planting um, you know trees bushes black currants red currants things like that okay so here I've got last year's compost as you can see we just took it out of the buckets as we harvested the potatoes and it went in here and this is another myth about growing in containers guys everybody thinks it's really expensive but once you've got your um, growing medium that's all it really is is a growing medium um, obviously you don't want to be growing potatoes in it constantly but two years on the bounce isn't an issue um, but you will have to feed it the second year so all we're gonna do is put a third of a bucket in here just like this and a little handful of blood fish and bone and that's it guys mix that in we're gonna put two potatoes in here and I'm gonna nestle them down just like that okay so what you're looking for is give them a bit of space now we're gonna top up to about two thirds I'm gonna add a little bit of blood fish and bone above them not a lot just a very small pinch just just a little bit like that guys just to put some feed above them and that is it and now we just top up right to the top now typically you will have seen videos of people telling you or you know, uh, do it about halfway, let the potatoes grow and um, and then when you've done that, then earth them up. But my experience of that, guys, is when you're earthing up, usually you're damaging the hones and it causes problems within the potatoes and they end up flopping over and everything. So I'm, for the last few years, I've just filled the bucket straight to the top and they find their weight. It's no different to burying them in the ground. Um, and they will find their way straight up there we go that's it that's this potato bucket done I'm just going to give a little tap down just to set a little around those potatoes I usually keep it for about an inch from above you can see how good this compost is there's worms in it keep it about an inch from above and then loosen it up now what that'll do is allow you to put water in there and allow it to sink rather than just running off the edges. So I got nine more of these and then we're going to trench these and I'll come back to you when that's done guys. So I've dug out a shallow trench for these buckets and it's just a case now of sitting the buckets in the trench. They've all been prepared exactly the same way. What you will notice though is that these buckets are going to be much higher than the ground, so therefore they're more prone to wind. So it is important, like with any other potato, that you support the top growth.
There we are. So all it means now is that we need to pull some of this soil back in around them. burying the buckets sort of about half their depth you know one third to half their depth and what this will do it'll help keep the buckets cool and it'll help to retain moisture and the other thing it does is helps to support the buckets from being blown over and other stuff like that. So uh, we'll just scrape this around here. And then the last thing then is to give these a good watering. And that'll be it for the experiment until harvest time, guys. We might have a little update on them, but I don't know if it'll be a point. But we'll see. Now, this isn't very scientific, I know. Okay. A handful of feed here and there doesn't mean they're exactly the same but as a general rule this will give us an idea of what's what the rest of this in here fill this hole back in There you go guys, so we've got in that line there we have 20 potatoes and in this line here we have 20 potatoes. One's in the ground, the other's in buckets and at the end of the year when we harvest we're going to see, we'll weigh up every single potato out of each of these and we'll see what we come to. So make sure you tune in for that last episode where you see the results of this little experiment. Whatever else goes in is neither you or there. I will mark these now with markers so we know that this is part of the experiment. Anyway guys, that's it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. We've got loads of other episodes on potatoes, so uh, check out the potato playlist. You know, you'll be able to have a look exactly how we do things here at UK Here We Grow. Anyway guys, that's it for this episode. I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.